You're not a human on a spiritual journey. You're a spirit on a human journey. And it's about our spirit to spirit connection. So whatever we can come together for this generation, we need to. Starting there with the young people, exchanging cultures, ideas, exchanging uh, friendship, it's critical. It's really, really important. When you say I love you, I say because that's it. It means my heart embraces your heart. You know, my soul embraces your soul. And, and I give you my full trust. But do we really do that? Do we really embrace one another? Do we really love one another? I was scrolling Facebook, and uh, there was a story popped up on, on uh, the Lakota Sioux and the Pine Ridge Reservation. And then a few days later, um, I was in a meeting, and somebody mentioned Sister Cities, and just I had the flash of insight, wherever that comes from, where it just dawned on me that, huh, uh, indigenous nations are sovereign, and the Sister Cities organization is there to form relationships internationally, so why not explore the possibility of having a sister city with an indige indigenous nation, a tribe? And so I approached Carmen Ramirez, uh, who is our cultural broker. And my partnership with the sister cities started when the mayor wanted to find out who was here before us. Uh, before the formation of the city, and we talked about some other tribes, and it just happened that Northern Arapaho were coming in, and we discussed the idea of maybe a possible Sister Cities partnership. So that's how it started. Uh, my name's Stephen Fasthorse. Uh, I am a Northern Arapaho Business Council member. The whole area of uh, the Front Range used to be my tribe's homelands. And so we were invited, uh, a small delegation, down to visit with this uh, organization. And the mayor of Longmont um, shows up to the, to the meeting, uh, Brian Bagley, you know. And so <laughs> um, had a very awkward um, first time uh, meeting um, the mayor of Longmont. <laughs> and Stephen Hat Fast Horse is talking. And and I just kind of raised my hand and jumped out of protocol, so to speak, and just said, hey, my name is Brian Bagley. I'm the mayor of Longmont, which is just 20 minutes away. And uh, I'm here to explore the idea of a sister city's relationship. And in order to start, I see you're here. I've heard all these people welcome you. But the one question I haven't heard asked that I'd like to know is, what do you want? What do you and your tribes and your people want from us? And he kind of stopped. He says, God, I don't know. I've never been asked that. We've never been asked that. I, I, could, I could sense the, I, I guess, the, the, the urgency or the, like he really wanted to, to talk, you know, and like he really had something to say. So we exchanged information, uh, shot Stephen Fast Horse an email. He responded, and that was the beginning of, of what has become a multi-year, four-year relationship now. So before we even got to that point, Brian had to kind of go through an orientation with me, you know, to understand that, as I tell you, trust is a very big deal for us, you know, and I, I really kind of gave him a short course on history, a, a quick uh, 101 with him to help him know what he's, what he's asking for. In that process, um, I had to learn about him. You know, I wanted to know you know, who are you? You know, where do you come from? You know, and so there was an exchange, you know, so he had actually had to um, be personal with me, you know, um, not just as a mayor. You know, he had to be, well, who, who was Brian Bagley? Again, I, I really needed to know why. What's in it for you? You know, what are you after? 
you know, the history of our people has been very, very terrible, you know, as far as the atrocities that have been committed to us. And so, you know, that plays a big part when you're the leader for the tribe and someone is coming at you, you know, and, and wants to know you and wants to, wants to be a part of who we are. And, and wants to know more of who we are. It's, um, it's a pretty big process for us before we actually let people do so. You know, just the trust factor. Um, as I was going through a very difficult time in my life, it made me more humble, right? And if you actually look at the history of the tribes, you had a bunch of rich white guys in positions of power, want more power, more land, more money. Uh, for their families and themselves and their friends. And uh, they, uh, they decided to take it from the native people. And so when I went up there, it was truly, what do you want? How can we help? Um, and, and I learned, I listened, I asked questions and shut up, which those who know me wouldn't believe it. <laughs> he did wear his heart on his sleeve. And he got to know uh, some very beautiful people that really uh, opened his eyes. And to see that and watch him take the time to, to do so cemented that he was sincere. Because the people that I introduced him to were family. And they vetted him. They took him through a process. And that's all I need is my family to tell me. And the family was like, we approve of this guy. Probably one of the craziest uh, non-natives we know. You know, it's like, this guy really is truly something else. <laughs> one thing led to another. And before you know it, um, we're, we're uh, preparing um, to come face to face and meet with Longmont. Um, Brian said, you know, we have this proposal that we would like to try and do a sister city with the Northern Arapaho who we'd been meeting with. And it goes so much along with the mission of Sister Cities. He presented in such a way that was clarifying that, you know, we started because we had conflict with Japan in World War II. And um, to end that conflict or to try to rebuild some of those um, relationships, we said, all right, let's start a sister city exchange programs with different cities. And that spread out. Um, our second one was due to some violence within our Latino community, within our Mexican community here in Longmont. And, you know, what better way to try and rebuild some of those damaged relationships and difficult relationships um, than, you know, through youth, through understanding, through trying to form these friendships. Sister Cities, when it was formed by Dwight Eisenhower, it was to form relationships between nations so that we'd have a better understanding. His thought was if we knew each other better, there would be no more war. The Native Americans, this is their land. Right? It's, they call it the Indian nation. So when uh, Mayor Bagley wanted to go up there and, and talk to them about this idea, I wanted to be part of it. This recognition that we've been at war, right, with people within our own country, that they are sovereign nations, just like a country outside, and that that might be something that other communities could think about. We think of Native Americans as noble creatures, but that's a, that's a myth that we keep on going and that they're actual living people that have issues that are the result of the policies of the American government. And so I, I had a lot of conflicting feelings for myself to be like, how am I involved in that? Am I, is there any, um, you know, what are my responsibilities as a human being and citizen of this area and citizen of this country to, uh, to do anything about it? And the great thing is I actually can with this Sister Cities program. 
in this way, we could take a small step and open relationships with people who used to live here who want to come back and visit and be able to have access to their homelands and, and have kids get to know each other on a personal level. And that, that's exciting to me. You know, at the time, I was pretty naive. You know, I, I uh, like most politicians, most city staff members, you know, there's a certain way you do things as a city employee, as a government official, right? And so uh, I thought, and rightly so, I guess in retrospect, I think what we needed to do is officially go up there. Before we went up, um, uh, Carmen Ramirez, her, her husband, I don't know if, if you folks know Ray, Ray's awesome. And Ray has been very active in the, in the Native American community. He's very, very knowledgeable about the, not only the cultural, but, but also the, the legal workings of the tribal systems. You know, I figured out my role really quick. And my role was gonna be is to teach the mayor teach the people from the city how to relate to, to Native people, uh, how to talk to them, but more importantly, how to listen. You know, unfortunately, people in this society a long time ago forgot how to listen, uh, but they never forgot how to ask questions. And. Uh, so my role was to break them of that habit. Quit asking questions and sit down and listen. And so uh, I asked Ray via Carmen, hey, would you be my guide? You know, I, I don't know the protocol. I don't know the, the culture. Would you be willing to sit there with me to make sure that I don't screw up? And when I do, tell me how to fix it. So I spent weeks and actually months uh, meeting with different people from the city with the mayor continually. Uh, starting out teaching them the protocols, uh, teaching them that when they go to the reservation, you can't just meet with the tribal government. What you have to do is meet with the elders. That's the important thing. Meet with the elders. And I said, and there, you really have to learn to listen. Don't interrupt them. If they're talking about something entirely different than what you're there to listen to, Listen, because eventually what they're telling you is going to be a lesson, is going to be a story that's coming around eventually to your specific question. I, uh, again, if you know me, I don't do, I don't do things small. And so uh, uh, city, city management, meaning our city, uh, our, our city manager, his direct reports, um, anybody and everybody I could think of along with city council, most, most city council members, we just all went to the reservation. And uh, we had a three-day kind of a conference where the goal was to understand the tribe, where they came from, how they felt, how they worked, um, their, just, just their history. They were just trying to get inside their heads, right? I remember the very first day when we met Sister Cities. It was at a luncheon here at the Wind River Casino. And Brian Bagley gifted the tribe to 100% pure buffaloes. And that was very impressive because a lot of people don't think about our people. And um, Brian, being the mayor of Longmont, had that good thought about the Arapaho people once they were educated about uh, those lands being our Arapaho homelands. Yeah, and that was the beginning of the relationship. The city, with this donated fund, we bought them two national championship breeding buffalo. This first night that we went up there, they organized this, this dinner, right? And I told Stephen before we, we, we started, I said, look, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna apply two rules that I think that are gonna be right. Rule number one is, um, I'm never going to ask you for anything, ever. I'm not gonna ask you for money, land, nothing but your friendship, nothing, you have my word. And the other thing is, I will never break my word to you, meaning I will not uh, promise something and then fail to deliver. By the way, I told you I'd get you some buffalo. Here's two buffalo, right? And so that was presented to the tribal elders by showing up there and saying, here's some buffalo, we wanna be your friends. 
you know, immediately that room just was, are you kidding me, really? That's kind of cool. You know, we've, we've never had anybody show up and, and give us something without wanting or taking something. And so, uh, and so that meeting was pretty special. We had dinner, they, they taught us a little bit about their language, about their culture. And then at the end, we really got traction. It was just me and Stephen Fasthorse. And in the back of the room, you see these three really old Northern Arapaho elders. And unbeknownst to me that two of the three people sitting there, it was uh, their pipe keeper, which is, the, which is the apex of the tribal leadership. Um, and his name was Nelson White Eagle. He, he's still alive. Um, great man, gentle, sweet, wise, cares for his people. Um, and then his two brothers, um, Herb uh, Welsh, who was there, um, who speaks for his brothers, and then Nelson White Eagle's other brother, uh, Crawford White Eagle, who was one of what, what they call the four old men. And essentially, you can think of it as the pipe keeper who holds the pipe, the sacred pipe. That's why he's called the pipe keeper. And then the four old men are four uh, selected men who are ceremonial leaders, both for ceremony, um, religious purposes. Uh, it, it's, they, they represent the tribal leadership. My husband, he was one of our ceremonial leaders. He had a lot of knowledge and he had a lot of wisdom and he had a lot of love for people. In our Rapho way of life, we always consult our elders first. We get their, their um, we talk to them about how they feel about things and their knowledge and how to go forward and you know what their thoughts are. It's always, um, that's our, our protocols. We consult with the elders first. And so that night, that's what he did. Everybody left, and there was my husband Crawford and his brother Nelson White and his other brother Herb Welsh, and he sat and visited with them. I remember right in Bagley, he came up and he met with my brothers and I, uh, and he had talked to us. And he wanted, he, you know, he had talked, he had spoke with business council and different tribal representatives and so on. But what Brian wanted, he wanted to speak to the people that, that uh, sit at that core, at, at, that, at that center. And so, he, you know, he spoke with my brother Nelson and my brother Crawford, I, uh, and we had a good long discussion, you know, about the sister cities, different areas in Colorado that were involved in Sand Creek, uh, uh, the repatriations in Sand Creek, uh, in Colorado, uh, just a lot of concerns. So here I had two of the five and the leader of the tribe, and I went up and introduced myself, and Herb said, my name's Herb, Herb Welsh, I speak for my brothers, and... And uh, my understanding is that you want to have uh, the tribe's friendship. And I said, yeah, I'd like that very much. He's like, you got to follow protocol. And I'm like, what? He's like, you got to follow protocol. And you need to do it in the right way. And I'm like, Ray. <laughs> I brought Ray. <laughs> Every tribe has different protocols on meeting with the elders. I wasn't real familiar with the Northern Arapahoes. So we asked, what are the protocols? You know, what do you expect? And they filled us in real quick and said, okay. Uh, sat down with the mayor at that point, said, okay, we're gonna meet with the elders. Uh, this is what you need to do. You're gonna be tested. I said, there's always tests involved. I said, you, you know, you have no idea when they're coming or what they're all about and you may not even realize you're being tested, but you're going to be tested. And so we met with uh, the elders, met with the pipe carrier. Uh, the main elder at that time was Crawford White Eagle, uh, who passed away recently, unfortunately. We kind of went from there and they did test him. Uh, about 30 minutes into the conversation, he got a real test. The elders were sitting there and after a while, they, they started talking among each other in, in Arapaho. So neither, none of us could understand what they were saying. But they would talk for a while, then they'd laugh. And then they would talk for a while, then they would laugh. And, uh, you know, the mayor is kind of getting real antsy. It's going, what, you know, what are they doing? And uh, I just leaned over and I told him, I said, I have a feeling your first lesson is coming. And, uh, you know, they quit talking, then they faced him and they said, we decided we're going to give you an Indian name. 
And the mayor just, you know, his chest puffed up and he got, I said, all right. And uh, they told him what it was, you know, it was in the Arapaho language. And, you know, the, he was thrilled, you know, and I leaned to him, I said, look out. <laughs> There's something coming. And then he got curious and he said, what does that mean? And he said, that, mean, that name means white man's eagle. And the mayor said, wow, that's a fine name. And, you know, they were just really proud. Then something clicked and he said, what is a white man's eagle? And the elder said, a chicken. And they just laughed and laughed. And they were all staring at the mayor at that point because they wanted to know how he was going to take that. And the mayor just cracked up, just could not stop laughing. And I just leaned over and said, you just passed the first test. Because if you would have been offended, everything would have been over right then and there. They wanted to see if you had a sense of humor. And you did. But, uh, you know, it made me feel good that Brian really wanted to make sure that, that he got everything right. He was genuine. I, I guess he really wanted to make sure that uh, what he was doing was not only sanctioned by our ceremonial uh, people, but our, our, our tribal government and, and uh, all the people that are that are that were represented and and you know he came up more than once. I mean he came here visited us many many times, and he and it became a personal you know it became personal for him, and he uh, you know even to this day you know he he still has close ties to uh, myself my brother's family and and many of us. When you're building a relationship and there's things that were done wrong to our people. Um, Number one, it's acknowledgement. Acknowledge that fact that there was some things that weren't right. And then uh, healing that and going forward. How can we bring people together? How can we help people heal? And that's the first part of it. Acknowledgement in building those relationships. So it's not just for the here and now, like I said. It's for all the future generations of Arapaho people. If I had my way. You know, I would want these things to stay at the forefront of every discussion. Uh, repar reparations, uh, uh, acknowledgement. Uh, just to right those wrongs, you know, because those were wrongs. And uh, the government stands as well as a time of war, you know. Uh, to the victor go the spoils. To the victor goes the writing of history. But we're changing that. We're changing it little by little. Because we can't overlook things forever, you know. So eventually you get to the root of what things really were like and, and how things really were. Everyone that's involved with the sister cities, you know, you're willing, you're willing to hear our side. And you're willing to acknowledge that. And you're willing to say, okay, let's, let's, let's see what we can do about it. Let's see how we can, we can, we can uh, bring that healing. You know, nothing is ever taught in the school systems about tribes, nothing. How is somebody supposed to understand the history of this country if you're not taught the true history, if you're not taught about the tribes? People don't know indigenous people. They, have the, they don't have the faintest idea what they're like, what their histories are all about, what their humor is, what their pain is. They don't know any of that. So we have a lot of work, and hopefully, starting with the city of Longmont, we can start doing that. Starting with this relationship, we can go to the school district here and say, okay, we need to take a look at your curriculum and change it. And start with the children. We kept the discussion open, and we admitted our ignorance at every step along the way that we had no idea what we're doing here except that we know how to be a sister city with other places. We know how to do youth exchanges. And they had also said what's important to them is to give their youth opportunities. And we were like, we can do that. 
We know how to do youth because we've been doing youth exchanges for over 30 years. When we're first starting to develop the, the relationship uh, with the youth, we definitely do some, some youth trainings, especially for our youth here, and they also do, did some trainings with their youth as well, just to prepare them for some of the things that were going to be different, right? Um, or to prepare them about what this actually means. Uh, we also did a training with parents and youth about um, about the real history and, and how they got moved away from these places or pushed away. Um, and a lot of our youth were really like down and they felt like, you know, like, why did we do that? This is, you know, they felt even guilty of it. And I remember Carmen and Ray Ramirez uh, had a conversation with them and said, you know, like the fact that you're here and you're part of this program, that means that you're taking the steps towards having a good relationship and, and building reparation. And I think about that in the same way of myself is, is there was a lot of things that I didn't know that I didn't learn in the history books that I, that to some extent, like I never tried myself to learn more about, um, but this has really opened my eyes to, to kind of dig a little deeper um, and to educate myself so that I can also help educate the community. Um, I think that one of the things that I really think about is, is like how to be inclusive and how to be supportive, um, how to make sure that when the youth are coming here and the, the elders and any community member from the Wind River Reservation or any other reservation is coming to Colorado, how do I, how do I make sure that I'm honoring uh, their, their uh, historical trauma that they've endured and how to, how to keep moving forward and still, and still making them feel welcome. You know, I've met with a Longmont youth and they're hungry for this knowledge. I mean, they're really hungry for it. They want to know. And they know they can't learn it in school. And they can't learn it from their parents. So who are they going to learn it from, you know? The youth from the tribe gives us hope. I love that our youth are, they're, they're fiery. And they, like, what Ray said was exactly right. They, they want more of this. They are not going to kind of just sit back and, and watch things happen. They're going to go, they're going to go get it. If they want change, they're going to make it. If we can help our youth understand specifically with the Northern Arapaho, these were the people who lived here before you. You might be living on a place that they walked across, their ancestors walked across 150 and beyond years ago. And do you want to know about them? You know, are you curious about them? I'm sure, I, I think a lot of people are curious. They know about our culture, right? They've been inundated with our culture for uh, generations. But for us to be open to everything that comes our way and just be like, okay, that sounds good, or I didn't know that, and I am ignorant of this, and I want to learn more, and I have no agenda other than you want your youth to have some experiences here in your homeland, and we can help you do that. And we want our kids to have experiences uh, that would broaden their horizons, which is one of our goals of Longmont Sister Cities. And so it's mutually beneficial relationship. That's the unique perspective about this whole relationship. That's because you're going to be able to tell these kids that, well, we're taking you from your home in Wyoming, but we're actually bringing you home to your original home. And I think that's going to be, yeah, I think it's going to be very heartfelt to where they're going to say, oh, wow. And if we can get the parents behind that to really teach them more of that, then they're going to be ready for it. They're going to say, wow, I get to go, you know, I get to go home. I get to be in Colorado and I get to be in Longmont and that's where we were. So that's what's so unique about it. When we were planning for the first student exchange to come down, it was really important for us to get it right. And we had nowhere to, uh, no mo role models, nothing to, to figure out how to do this. Um, and right before the exchange, it was our final meeting. We were sitting in City Hall uh, with um, Carmen Ramirez and my planning committee, and um, we were blessed with a visit from Crawford and Jackie White. He said, you just have to love them. Just love them. And it's such a simple thing to say, 
but how powerful to say, like, all you have to do is love them. When you do things from your heart, you're able to really take care of people and really think about, like, how, how can I make them feel comfortable? It's like, it's just being genuine. It's just, it, it becomes organic. Eventually, it led to uh, a first student exchange in 2019, uh, where we brought down six kids from Wyoming to uh, interact with seven kids from here in Longmont. Um, they spent four days together um, building community, and they had meals together, they danced together, they um, really had a wonderful, warm experience. Trust is really, um, has to be earned. And one of the things that I've really pushed for is we're not gonna make any promises that we can't keep um, and that we are going to um, reach out and ask questions and, and build that trusting relationship. Um, and an example of is really when the first group of kids came down from the reservation, they were nervous, they were fearful, they weren't sure what was going to happen and they hung back. They, they let their chaperone come in first to the park that we were in. Um, but we've learned over 30 years how to make people feel a little comfortable. So we had all these posters, and the kids held up these posters and welcomed them. And they said, welcome home, and um, you know, we're happy to see you, and those kinds of messages. And it broke the ice. Um, and that's what I hope we can continue to do, is to build those trusting relationships. When we were forced onto reservations, we were told to stay there. And it wasn't a choice, you know. Our choice was Colorado. But they said this was not your choice. You either stay here in this area or we will kill you. And that mindset has carried from generation to generation to generation. You know, we faced a lot of discrimination. It makes our children scared to sometimes reach out because they're afraid that they're going to get the slapped away. Um, I think that it's really hard for them to trust people. Um, I know that when I was young, that's how I felt. Um, racism, just because we live on, there's two border towns right next to where we live on the Wind River. And we faced a lot of that as children, but we don't want to be a part of that, so we don't act like that to people when they come here. Of course they would be reluctant to, to offer just like, oh yeah, let's send our kids over and let's send them back to Colorado and, and they're gonna be there for a little bit. How would, how would they feel comfortable if, if that's part of the, the fears that they have and the, the experiences that they had, right? And so that, that really, to me, made me understand like, okay, this is really, really special and we need to treat it very differently than any other program that we've done before. We have not done home hosting as much with the Native American, with the Northern Arapaho, because, um, especially with their kids, because they don't trust us with their kids quite yet. And that's completely understandable. Um, just with uh, understanding housing and the history there, uh, for our first exchange, uh, they stayed with Ray and Carmen because that was, you know, a trusted society members at Northern Rapa said, yes, you know, your kids, if they want to come here, are going to be safe. Um, and, the, you know, we usually do, you know, exchanges where you stay in the home of a student and just understanding, no, nope, that isn't going to work this time around. Maybe we'll get there. That's another hope for the future. And this initial one, that's going to be something that we, uh, that we have to respect. And uh, knowing the scope of what we can do, how to keep kids feeling safe and feeling like they were okay, that was uh, something else that really came up. Um, when the first uh, round of students came from Wind River, we got to take them to the mural that's over on Main Street with the, the generations braiding each other's hair. And we had this beautiful moment that they sat there and they're like, we wanna recreate the picture. So we had Longmont youth and the Northern Arapaho youth braiding each other's hairs. And they took a picture and they were so excited to see that. And I, I thought that was so beautiful um, that they connected to art that was in our community. You know, this when you see yourself represented in the community, it reminds you that you can be part of it, that you are welcomed here, that you are valued here. And after they were here just even for a few days, the way they interacted with the kids from our youth center, and they seemed to blossom so much just in those first few days. And they, they then led us and taught us dancing and things like that. I thought, oh, this, this could really 
go somewhere. The few kids that did get to go really enjoyed it. You know, they, they had an excellent time. From that, we intended to have another exchange the following year and actually send students from Longmont up to the reservation, but COVID got in the way. So we're going to do a separate exchange, in, at least initially, that'll be four to five days in duration here and four to five days in Wyoming. And during that time, the, the kids, the ambassadors as we call them, will learn about each other's cultures. Um, they'll cook together. They'll um, you know, do some crafts or whatever the, the tribe comes up with for our kids to do there. And the same thing happens here. We'll, it's a little bit of education, a little bit of fun, and a whole lot of culture all rolled into one. Our way of life is so important to us. You know, uh, we're not a Rapho people without who, knowing who we are as a Rapho people and our ceremonies and our way of life is so important. And when Longmont uh, youth come here, they're going to be able to learn about us as a Rapho people, you know, the homelands that they live on. And sometimes when, when you're, the more knowledge and education that you learn about one another, the more mutual respect you're gonna have one for one another. So we sent our students to the Wind River last week and they spent a week um, learning about the Arapaho culture they went to Sundance, they got to go to a powwow, they toured the res, they got to go to Thermopolis to a hot springs. Um, they made new relationships and this week um, we have our Arapaho friends here. They've been here for about five days and have really embraced um, their new friends and we are so excited to have an exchange given all of the cha challenges with the pandemic. So today they are working with Walt Poyer, who is a Lakota artist who is based here in Denver. This is like my third or fourth time with the kids. So it's been phenomenal and it just gets better and better as we move along. We have a focus uh, through a nonprofit I run called the Stronghold Society. And our Stronghold Society is based on inspiring Native youth through skateboarding, music, and the arts. We come here and focus on the painting aspects of it and getting to be creative through that. So we get these blank skateboards and stuff that are donated to us. And uh, we get the paints and all that, and we come together and we say, what do you guys want to paint? And so they each have their own little setups and they're kind of painting their own visions or their own ideas too. So. It kind of gives them a hands-on piece that they can take, put on their wall, or they can even get trucks and wheels and skate them, you know. So it's just kind of a fun avenue for them through that skateboarding music and the arts, which is a very creative, expressive avenue for this generation. Make sure you get red and all the colors on both sides so we even it out, okay? Next. This is a, a, a painting we created, started with the youth last night, just to get them the idea to just don't be afraid to touch the brush and start throwing some paint down. And uh, so we try to keep it up last night and we're starting to outline it today. But this is a black coal, one of the Arapaho chiefs. So that's who we selected for them to represent who they are. And this is going to sit in the, the youth center over here in Longmont and in each year, they're gonna pick a different chief or a different leader from the Arapaho tribes to paint with the kids. So we'll have these series of uh, Arapaho leaders on canvas. The, the movement is happening and, and all this stuff because you are the seventh generation. We're literally living in a time of transformation. It may seem harsh, it may seem fearful, and it may seem uncertain, but what's happening is things are getting in sync and they're getting in sync for what's to come. It's harmony and balance again. The little parts of just being a part of it with the kids, you know, they're gonna be the ones that carry this relationship in the future too. So I wanna see how that develops over the years and how that grows. And, you know, we're in trying times right now and I just wanna see hope with them. I wanna see, you know, that they see a, a, a good future ahead and we need to do everything we can to support that. Hopefully it'll give the tribes hope that things can change. 
that a handshake does mean something. That the signing of a document does mean something. You know, some people say the sky's the limit. Well, I don't think there is a limit on this. I think there's, there's so much um, potential and opportunity to be a beacon, you know, for, for the rest of the country. We have at least a template, a way, not the only way, but a way that has proven to be successful, which uh, took time, uh, trust building, relationship building, before we both said, okay, we're going to do this. I think that it's really beneficial with the sister cities to, to learn that um, value of, of looking out for one another, taking care of one another, learning new things about one another, because that's what it's going to take in this world for this world to survive. It's about friendship. It's about taking the opportunity to go over to those kids that you kicked off the playground, kicked off the school cafeteria lunch table and saying, why don't you come sit with us? You know, there's plenty of food, come sit with us. And then doing what it takes to understand them, to, to love them, to, to appreciate them, and to form friendship and familyship with them. As it comes along and more of our, our people are involved, that, that outside the box thinking, that mindset, and that, that pride that we have for Colorado, I think our people will want to push that envelope and say, you know, let's, let's help Colorado be what it, be all that it can be, you know, <laughs> and vice versa. I'm hearing the young people that came to visit us now talking about their children being in, this, in the exchange program, talking about elders coming, or maybe they're the elders that come and talk to our elders. Uh, those kinds of exchanges that just shows we continue to build our relationship. It's, it's an excellent start. It made me proud to live in Longmont, made me proud of the city, of the mayor, the city council, all the staff in the city, uh, I had pride, you know, because it was important, but we have a lot of work to do.